So here's a question. Um, and, and this is gonna be kind of fun to work out here. If you happen to know that, and, and let me make the make sure the numbers are correct here. Um, if you happen to know that um, the star Betelgeuse, which is the, the one of the two brightest stars in Orion, that and uh, the star Rigel. But if you happen to know that the star Betelgeuse is about half of the temperature of the sun, uh, meaning that the, the temperature in Kelvin is half what it is from uh, Betelgeuse to the sun. And, and that's more or less true. We, we know that, of course, by looking at the spectrum. Betelgeuse's spectrum peaks more towards the red. And that directly tells us what surface temperature it is. So Betelgeuse has half the temperature of the sun, but we know that the luminosity, based on how far it is from us, which you, we, we can directly measure, or I mean, not directly, that we, we don't travel there back, but we, we have means of measuring that. We know that based on the, the, the uh, Betelgeuse's distance to us, its luminosity is literally 160,000 times greater than our sun, which is immense. And by the way, how can you have an object that's even cooler than our sun, which is hundreds of thousands of times uh, uh, brighter or more energetic? That's what that means. And so the reason is that Betelgeuse is a hell of a lot bigger than our sun. And then hopefully that's obvious because we, many of you probably know that Betelgeuse is a red giant. So you have a much bigger star, even if each little square meter or square inch or whatever of that star is emitting less energy than our sun's the square meter of our sun would be, the fact that you have a grossly larger surface area means that you're going to have a much, much larger luminosity as well. So let me write this out here, and this is going to be an example that we're going to solve. OK, so again, just to repeat, Betelgeuse is, uh, well, the way I wrote it, it has twice the peak wavelength of our sun and 160,000 times more luminosity. Um, uh, it is kind of assumed that we've used this value to calculate that, by the way. Uh, actually, no, that's not true. No, that's not true at all. Um, but anyway, there are other calculations that went into this that, that I'm not going to get into. But so anyway, we can answer directly what its radius is. And just to diagram this out, I'm going to draw our sun here. And let's say we happen to measure how much light is coming out of one square meter for our sun. So there's a given amount of light per square meter of our sun, and we know how much overall light our sun is emitting. And then now there's a much bigger star over here, which we can already predict. Let's say if we could measure exactly how much light was coming out of one square meter for that. I'll come back to this in a moment, but answer, for the, answer this for yourself. If our sun is outputting, let's say, four photons per square meter, and if this is Betelgeuse, how many photons would Betelgeuse be emitting per square meter? And if you know that, how can you then calculate the total amount of light Betelgeuse is getting off? So I'll, I'll come back to that in a moment. Um, but let's talk about directly what's the relationship between luminosity and intensity. So luminosity is the total energy per second, and intensity is the energy per second per square meter. If that, if that makes sense there, it's, and you can think of it as E over S times meter squared. So how are those two things related? It's actually a really simple calculation. And I'm going to repeat that up at the top here. So luminosity, and I'll just put, I'll write it like this. This means what are the units of it? So this just means what are the units of luminosity there? So the units of luminosity are simply just watts. The units of intensity are watts per square meter, or the SI units at least. So we can use this to figure out what the direct connection is. And turns out, it's pretty easy. If you know the intensity of an object, all you need to do is multiply the intensity, which is how much power per square meter, times the number of square meters you have, or oops, I meant to write SA. 
surface area. Take the intensity of the object, multiply it by the surface area. That gives you the luminosity. As long as all of those are in SI units, you're good. And again, to be clear, By the way, this is not Lumosity. That's some dumb website that has like silly games. It's Luminosity, which is a very precise mathematical and astrophysical term. So this is the direct connection between them and we can even more precisely write it now for a star. For a star that's spherical, which by the way, we don't really know of any stars that aren't like too oblate. Uh, that's the oblong circle or oblong sphere. Uh, so most stars are extremely to a high degree spherical, not all. And so this is just four pi r squared, right? That's the surface area of a sphere, right? The intensity we know from Stefan's law, sigma t to the fourth. Turns out that's what the luminosity is. By sorry, it was by Stefan's law. Stefan's law says it's sigma t to the fourth times or pi r squared. And this is actually a really super useful equation here because this allows us to compare two known values and two of them are fairly easy to measure and, and derive a third one, which is extremely difficult. Now for a star, which of these two would actually be the easy? Well, actually, which single one is the easiest to measure? All you do is you take a spectrum, find where it peaks, you're good. Literally a single measurement that I could, that, that, I, that I very easily can do from my backyard right here. You just measure, you take a, a amount of uh, power from each individual wavelength. You look at where it peaks, you, you have T. Easy to measure. Luminosity is a little bit more difficult, but the only other, the, 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 the complicated part of this that, well, the easy part is you need to measure the brightness. Obviously, a bright, the brighter a star is, the more energy it's outputting, but you need to scale that by the distance, and specifically the distance squared. So as, as the star gets twice as far away, it gets four times as dim. So it, this is the luminosity is actually fairly easy to measure as long as you know the distance to a star. And for the, the most part, any nearby star we, we know very precisely based on what's called parallax. Once you get further past a few thousand light years, we can't use that anymore, so we have other means. But turns out that you can measure that one a little less easily. You can easily measure that to us. Every telescope we have ever invented in the history of civilization, probably for most of the future of civilization, it's unlikely we'll actually be able to directly measure the radius of a star to any more than one pixel ever. Um, and by the way, when I have my telescope set up outside, um, in perfect seeing conditions, I actually do get stars to about one pixel. Now, when, when you have quite a bit of atmospheric turbulence, that you start, it starts appearing the stars look like three or four pixels wide or five or six like I had the other night, but that's just due to atmospheric blurring. But every star has always looked like a single dot or what we call a point source, simply because stars are so damn far away that we can't actually make out the, the diameter or the physical radius of them that no matter how much we zoom in, stars will always look like points of light, at least through current and future, near future technology. So this is next to impossible to, to like at least image, but we can discover it by measuring these two things instead. And we already know, by the way, what sigma and what we know, I mean, four is four, and we know what pi is, so. So anyway, we can now use this to answer a problem here based on the values that we know compared with Earth. So as you recall, the, the, our known or our given values are that, and I'll write it like this, the temperature of Betelgeuse relative to our sun is a half. And by the way, that's the abbreviation for our sun. Just a circle and a dot in the middle. So what you want to do for any sort of comparison problem like this, if you haven't seen them before, first of all, how are you at this point in physics? Uh, second, this is a proper way to solve it. You relate it back to the things you already know. And we also know that LB, or the luminosity of Betelgeuse, is, uh, yeah, I'll write like this, 160,000 
L sine numbers. After I get done explaining that, should be a dot. And what I want to know is RB, RB is some multiple of R sine. So use these two knowns in combination with this equation right here to solve for that. So if you're uh, paying attention at home um, and you're on not live video, pause this and actually calculate this out. Uh, it's something that can be fairly easily done. Um, if you are Justin, uh, you don't have that luxury because we're going to go straight into it. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, you have, you have your place of honor here. Um, okay, so let's actually calculate this out here. And we have, uh, um, now the nice thing is I'm, I'm not really ever going to plug in any values for sigma or four or pi because they're all going to cancel out eventually. But let's, first of all, let's write out what the luminosity of our sun would be based on the radius here. So we know that L sun is equal to, I'm going to pull all the constants together, 4 pi sigma p sun to the fourth r sun squared. Or you can rearrange that here, which we will do shortly, and we can write r, r sun squared as that over that, of course. I'll just leave it like that for now. And now we can write L B equals four pi sigma P B to the fourth R B to the fourth. Nope, squared. So the reason why I've written like this is that uh, you know what? I wish I would have. I'm going to flip this here really quickly. Uh, yeah, I, I'm just going to flip the subscripts now that you've gotten it down in pen, I'm sure. B. And what I want to do here is I want to just basically divide one side by the other. So I'm going to get some ratio here on the left-hand side and some ratio on the right-hand side. So I'm literally dividing the whole equation by itself. When I do that, actually, yep. So the output of that right down here, LB over L sun equals, now the reason I've done that is to cancel these out, of course, equals TB over T sun to the fourth. That's another reason why I write it like that. So you can just group those together. Times, and I will keep these individual. Actually, no, I will put it like that. RB over R sun. Okay, so I'm just going to rewrite that exactly as it is. LB over L sun equals. We have that. And by the way, really what we're after in this problem here is what is this ratio? Not squared, just what is that ratio period? If we know that this ratio turns out to be two, we know that the Beyond's radi radius is twice that of the sun. So this we can treat that everything in parentheses there, we can treat as our unknown or our, our you know, our, our value that we need to solve for. So really we just multiply both sides by the inverse of that to the fourth. And then I'm going to kind of rearrange it a little bit. R, RB over RS squared equals T sun over TB to the fourth times LB over L sun just to the first. And now at this point, we actually know both of these ratios here. 
we happen to know that based on, so the, the value that we're given, um, let's see, let me write this for P that over P that, we were given that lambda max for the sun is half that for Betelgeuse. I, I hope that makes sense. Basically, we're saying that Betelgeuse has a peak wavelength twice that of our sun. So if you know what Betelgeuse peak wavelength is, our sun does half of that. And what that tells us is that the temperature of our sun is twice the temperature of Betelgeuse. And that's exactly where we came up with that there. So then in this equation there, you can say that T sun over TB is two and two to the fourth is 16. So that's what that is. And then by the way, T sun over, it's not T. Um, LB over L sun. Now, just looking over here, if you take this equation and you just divide both sides by L sun, which, yeah, sure, you could have done that here but and rearranged. But anyway, that's the full explanation. LB over L sun is 160K, 1.6 times 10 to the 5. So now we just have to plug in those numbers. 1.6 times 10 to the 5 times 16 is, uh, what is it? It's out here. Oh, it's easy. Uh, here we go. So our final answer is Rb over R sun. We have to write this way as if you take the square root of both sides of that, I'm gonna take the square root of 16 times, actually, let's write it, okay. Uh, and I'll, I'll write it fully first. Um, and so now plugging in the numbers, this becomes the square root of 16 times 1.6 times 10 to the five, and I'll just put parentheses to make it clear. And the way you can think of that, think of this as 1.6 times 10 to the one. So this actually just becomes, this is why you can do it in your head. Um, this just becomes 1.6 squared times 10 to the six. So, you know, no need for a calculator here. This is just equal to 1.6 times 10 to the three or 1600. So that means that overall, the radius of Betelgeuse is over a thousand times that of our sun's. I think it's a pretty cool, you know, problem to actually be able to solve. If you understand what luminosity is, you understand what intensity is, you understand how the two laws of uh, thermal radiation work, you can now calculate sizes of objects without ever going there. So I hope that made sense. Um, it might be worth kind of going back through this and, and revising the arguments or trying to redo it yourself to, to follow the steps I took without me explaining them. But it is kind of a cool like intro to astrophysics problem that you would definitely see on any sort of like intro astrophysics class. So 